I was like a child, not seen nor heard, which is the only way I can eat. I don't like restaurants because I can't stand listening to other people talk. Call it a, a quirk. Call it a quirk of mine. I don't go out to dinner to listen to people scream. I don't go out, out to dinner to go listen to people scream and laugh. It doesn't entertain me. I don't need that kind of uh, sensual stimulation. I'd prefer to take, eat a takeout meal in front of a television set. But anyway, I went out there, and I, I'm not going to describe the menu. There's one thing they have that no one else has, which is egg white rice. It's amazing. Very, very interesting dish. And then the usual, you know, the steamed fish, but and all sorts of other things. It was really lovely in a private room. Wonderful. Sunday, I went out on my boat with the captain. We would turn right at Point Bonita. If you go out under, under the Golden Gate Bridge, sailors know this. They do it all the time. I'm pretty much strictly a bay boater. The bay can be pretty um, exciting unto itself. On a windy day, the bay is like an endless sea. I mean, you can get some nice swells, some nice waves, spray in your face crossing the bay to and from San Francisco. But if you go out under the Golden Gate Bridge and you drive about, oh, I don't know, five miles, you hit Point Bonita, which is the last point of land, and then you turn north in the channel. And about 15 miles, five miles out is a place you're never supposed to go over. It's like no man's land called the Potato Patch. Because they sometimes get monster rollers coming in over there so you don't go there. And we went up the coast, and it wasn't very exciting. It was fulfilling. i got to tell you something. When I came back from the ride in my boat, which I've had six years, the Grand Banks is the greatest yacht ever made, by the way. Again, the boat's six years old, and everyone says, Oh, Mike, how long do you think you're going to live? Get yourself another boat. You deserve it. You know, you can afford it. You know, i got to talk about something. Why get rid of something that's perfect? It's six years old. It has less than 400 hours on it, and I'm not here to auction the boat off. But this boat holds the water like no other boat I've ever been on. And the newer boats changed the hull design from a um, Ed Monk design, which is a semi-displacement trawler hull. The boat will still do 15 to 18 knots with twin 365 ho uh, turbo horsepower uh, Cummins diesels. American made the best engines in the world. The boat's got I started every time I ever started it in six years. Imagine having a boat that starts every time in six. you've tried it in six years. Go out, come back, get in bed at night to go to sleep. Now, normally I have a high degree of anxiety in my being. That's how I've lived all my life. I'm kind of an edgy person. I've been this way my whole life. And if it would have killed people, it was supposed to be so bad for you, anxiety and stress, I would have been dead at 11. So this is a, a thing that drug peddlers sell you call the American Medical Association. They tell you you're supposed to lead a stress-free life. Frogs don't even lead a stress-free life. Nobody leads a, a stress-free life. It's a, it's a myth in order to sell you pills and psychotherapy. But I come back from the boat ride. I have zero anxiety in my being. And when I go to sleep at night, you know what I think about? I don't think about being banned in England. I don't think about Obama, the neo-Marxist. I don't think about him killing America's economy. I don't think about arming uh, the, the fruit of Islam with guns and turning them into warriors to control the population a la Hitler. I don't think of any of that. In other words, my normal fears are gone. All I could think about was the wa were the waves and the color of the water and how the boat moved in the water. There was a certain movement of the hull through the water, the way she gripped and moved and gripped and moved and gripped and moved and gripped and moved. The motion became unto itself a meditation. And I thought about something at night, and this is the point of the story. There was nothing exciting. There was nothing inherently exciting about the boat ride, but it was fulfilling. And that comes down to day-to-day -day life. Many of us are told by Moloch, who owns Fox News and, and newspapers and uh, magazines and book companies and everything you turn, he's trying to get you excited into buying something. So he tells you to look for excitement. And the only way to get excitement is by buying something that one of his advertisers peddle. But let me tell you something. You should be seeking fulfillment, not excitement. And that's the problem with American society today. The children have been taught to seek excitement not fulfillment. So they seek sex instead of marriage and children because they don't understand the fulfillment of being married and having children. All they've been brainwashed into thinking is that excitement is the end of human existence. And it comes back again to the same thing, whether it be sports or salacious entertainment or bad fast food. All of these things are minimally exciting, but none of them are fulfilling. Now, you've heard all of this before. 
I'm pontificating on it because it came home to me over the weekend in a simple way. A simple boat ride up the coast, off the coast of San Francisco, gave me fulfillment, not excitement. And so the moral of the story is, the less excitement that you seek, the more fulfillment you will have. This is Father Savage back in a moment. Armstrong and Getty. They're not bullies with a microphone. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Talk 910 KNEW. There's a lot of news. There's no news. It's the best of times. It's the worst of times. <laughs> you know... We could talk about news, we could talk not about the news, we could talk about Chinese food, Italian food, uh, I'd say Irish food, but there is none. I'm joking, don't get mad. I've been in enough Irish bars to tell you that uh, they're, not, they're not known for that, okay? Let's, let's not get angry now all of a sudden. Don't bring up anger now and start telling me dishes with lamb, okay? Chicago, Tom, welcome to the Savage Nation. Yeah, Michael, I wanted to know what health benefits, if any, are promoted by the squid ink and squid ink pasta. I give you the philosophy of a thousand years of evolution. Don't seek excitement, seek fulfillment. I get a question about squid ink. All right, that's the nature of the business I'm in. Wait, I will refer to uh, the Bible, Deuteronomy 27:12. If a caller asketh thou about squid ink after thou hast given thy heart and thy mind, tell him to shove it! <laughs> I know, you don't, you don't actually find that in Deuteronomy. You will not actually find that. I don't think they deal with squid. I think it's one of the banned foods. Thou shalt not suffer a sorceress to live. I don't want to go into that. There's too many people in San Francisco. Everything that thou shalt not do, they do. An eye for an eye. you got to look those things up, an eye for an eye. Thou shalt not cover. I don't want to read the Bible. Leave me alone. I'm tired of religious now. I'm, I'm, I'm off religion. I think I'm giving up on the, on the whole religious thing for a while. I, I am so jaundiced on religion and religious. I know you're going to be uh, disappointed, but I'm not doing... Uh, I mean, to, I'm taking the whole summer off from it. I don't like fanaticism in any religion. I don't like it. We talk about radical Islam. How about radical everything else? You know, I know that the radical Christians don't kill and this and that today, but, you know, to me, the, the fanatics, the fanatics in religion worry me greatly. Just as the fanatics in government worry me greatly. I don't like fanaticism. So I'll say, well, you're a fanatic because you believe in borders, language, culture. All right, so you define your enemy as a fanatic, whatever you want to say. I just don't, I'm not into this whole religious thing. I think it's a racket. This organized religion bothers me. Sure, I believe in God. I'm going to give me the litmus test. First of all, it's my business whether I do or not, but I do. Why? Because I'm afraid that if I gamble wrongly, I'll be cast into you know where for, the, for eternity. So I have that basic let us say, primal or, or, or childish view of the world. If you, you're braver than me and you don't care what happens to you after you die, all right, whatever. I was raised another way, and that's the end of the story. That's how I shall be. I'm pretty sure there's a creator, but truthfully, I can get closer to God through an elephant and through a gorilla and giving to the gorilla fund and the elephant fund and seeing that anyone who poaches a gorilla, uh, a gorilla and cuts his hand off, they hunt them down and, and they knock them off. You know, I mean, I gave money to a group that hires a military to go out and kill the poachers who, who cut off the tusks off elephants or the wonderful, sensitive, kindly Asians 